What's up everybody? It's your boy EJ. I'm back. I uh, hope you guys are doing good in your schooling and your work, wherever you guys are. Um, hope that the Lord is uh, blessing you guys and uh, keeping you in His will. Uh, this video is going to be uh, a topic that I actually want to give shout out to my girlfriend. She actually uh, gave me this topic. Uh, I woke up thinking, okay Lord, I, I want to do a video but I don't know what it is and I was struggling like I was I I struggled and I was trying to figure out and she asked me what are you gonna do what's your topic gonna be on I'm like I don't even know like I have no idea I'm blanking out and she asked okay you did all these other ones and then finally she said what about worship and it was like ping you know and it was funny because previously uh, like this morning I got up had my coffee um, did everything you know that I was supposed to do and then you know I plugged my headphones and I started playing drums and there were certain songs I was playing to and each song had a different um, rhythm to it each song had made me feel differently and it was great like and that is my form of worship um, but it made me start thinking okay do we really know what worship is what true worship is yeah we we, we sing songs, we pray at the altar, we put money in the offering basket, you know, we do all these things, but is that what true worship is? Now, um, I'm going to be looking down at my notes, so doesn't just let so you know, I'm not blanking out, and just like looking at, I'm looking at my notes. But that's the question I ask you guys, is do you know what true worship is? Do you know the, the meaning of it? Is... True worship, just singing songs and and crying out to the Lord and and um, playing an instrument and stuff like that. Is that true worship to you or just something more? But I'm going to go ahead and explain to you what true worship is. Now, as young kids, we grow up, we go to church, and we hear the word and we pray and we sing songs and so it's natural it's natural for us to think okay this is worship and and it is i'm not saying it's not it, it is but it's not the true definition of worship you know worship is not the slow songs again it's not the amount of money that you put in the basket it, it, it's not just volunteering at doing things within the church no those are acts or expressions of worship but they do not define what worship really is um in the Webster's Dictionary, it says here that worship is to honor with extravagant, extravagant love and extreme submission. Oh boy. And I know part, uh, uh, probably lost a lot of you already when I said submission. Now, because unfortunately, in this generation, no one likes to submit to anything. Everyone thinks that they're their own God, they're their own uh, master, and so... For them, even as Christians, even as young Christians, we think because everything's going good that we can do things on our own. I'm sorry, you can't. And the moment we think that way, God's hand moves out of our lives and He says, All right, you want to do your thing? Fine, do your thing. And it's not He's being mean, but He's trying to teach you something. But that's, a, that's another topic for later on. But that is what worship is. Um, so true worship is defined by our priority on God. Where we place God in our lives. Is God number one in your life? Or is he only number one when things are going good? Or on Sundays? When is God your number one? That's the question you have to ask yourself. You have to analyze and look at your life. Evaluate your lifestyle, your spiritual lifestyle and think, where is where is God in my life? Is your job taking over God? Is your schooling, your education taking over God? Is your money, is your possession that you have taking over God's place? And if they are, then you need to really evaluate and you evaluate your life and you really don't know what true worship is. Now, um, it's a true worship. Oh Lord, got all these like notifications going off. Shut up. There you go. 
uh, <laughs> uh, true worship is, is a matter of the heart. It, it's from the heart. It's not how you feel. And see, that is why young people leave services the same. Because they only serve God, they only worship God with their emotions. When everything is, when the climax is up here during the service, everybody's crying and praying and the presence of God is there. But they're just serving with their, their emotions. And so it's dead. Because the next day, they're back to normal. They're back stressing out about nothing. They're back to arguing with their parents or with their teachers or with their friends or they're being rude, they're being um, uh, hot-tempered and everything. So it's really not change. There's no change. It's just an emotional roller coaster that you're, you're going through. So, again, it's a, it's a lifestyle. Where to worship is a, is a lifestyle. And if your lifestyle does not express the beauty of holiness through you know, through the love of, for the love of God, and you don't live in an extreme or excessive submission to God, then you're not living a true worship life. Then you're not really worshiping the Lord with all your heart. It's just a, a thing that you do, like a Snapchat filter. You just put it on so that people can say, oh, you look good. That's about it. But God looks past that and He says, I, I know I know that you're not worshiping me the way that I deserve to be worshipped. Again, God is a jealous God. And I know it's for some of you think, well that you know that's kinda, you know, uncruel. No, I mean God had mercy and He made you. He made you individu individually unique. And all He asks is that you worship Him, truly worship Him with all your heart. In your lifestyle. And when we were baptized in his name, we were making that commitment saying, I am making my life according to his will. Whatever he wants me to do, I will do. I am not going to do what I want to do anymore. It's for him. Now, if, if we thought that it was going to be easy, then... We need to, again, reanalyze what we're doing. We need to start thinking, okay, what exactly am I doing for the Lord? It is he, again, going back to the priority, it is God my priority in my life? Because if not, then we are not truly worshiping God. Again, worship is not about the songs. It's not about how many instruments you can play. It's not about how high you can sing or how low you can sing. No, it's about... Giving your heart truly to the Lord and having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Him. And putting those, those actions that you do, but actually, actually putting it in your lifestyle. Every day. Not on Sundays. Or not just at youth activity, activities. But on an everyday basis, living holy and uprighteous. So, we worship God... Uh, before I go into that, why do we worship God? And that is, that is another reason why we don't know what true worship is. Because we don't know who our God is. We don't know who, that Jesus created us for a purpose. But we have yet to understand who He is. He's like that kid that at school, when people ask, Oh, do you know that person? Oh, yeah, I know him. Oh, really? Like, no, no. Oh, I don't know him, no. But, I mean, I see him in the hallways. That is why we don't have that true intimate, true, that true intimate worship with, with Jesus. Because we don't know who he is. We think he's just some, some God that just blesses us when, when everything's going well. No. He's not. I mean... We, we only see Jesus as, oh, well, he died for me, and oh, you know, by his grace and mercy, and I can, I'm here today. But we use his grace and mercy to do whatever we want. You know, and I'm just going to be real with you. I have heard young people talk just like the world now. And it makes me wonder, 
do we not know who we who we are anymore? Are, do we think that we as apostolics that that we can just do whatever now? Like are we have taken the 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 term grace? We have taken grace and and mercy as like a cover up to do whatever we want to do. Young people, that's not how it works. Grace and mercy doesn't allow you to do whatever you want. No, it it, it gives you it's a, it's a it's a way to bring you back up if you fall down. But that doesn't mean that Jesus is telling you, oh yeah, you can keep keep doing what you're doing. You know, keep talking the way you want to want to talk. Keep walking the way you want to walk. You know, no, it doesn't work that way. We have to realize that he demands a certain change from us. You know, the, the phrase goes, oh, well, come as you are. You know, Jesus accepts you as you are. Yeah, but he takes you as you are and he changes you. He doesn't just leave you as you are. No, he changes you. That his, That is his desire is to change you. But in order for a change to happen, we have to realize who he is. And then we have to realize how to truly worship him. So the first step is realizing who Jesus is, who your God is. And when you realize that, then you ask yourself, okay, Lord, show me how to truly worship you. And I'm not here to condemn anyone because they don't know how to truly worship. No, for the longest time, I didn't know what true, true worship was. I thought it was, again, same thing as you might all think, oh, it's uh, playing an instrument. On Sundays and crying at the altar I used to think that for the longest time but it wasn't too recently that I the Lord started touching my heart and I started realizing no it's it's an everyday thing it's a relationship that you have with God and when you realize that your relationship with God demands change and demands certain sacrifices once you realize it and accept it again just like just like the definition says, submission. When you are willing to submit to God's word, then God is able to work in you. But a lot, but see, here, here's the thing is that we want to live the way we want to live. We want to talk the way we want to talk. We want to walk the way we want to walk in our lives and expect God to change us. It's like, no, you've got to put your past, that old self behind and take up the new you. And you have to live how I want you to live. But if we don't learn that, if we don't learn how to submit to God's word and his authority, then we're, we're forever going to be miserable. We're always going to be stressing. We're always going to be uh, complaining that we're single. We're complaining about our relationship. We're going to complain about so many things. And we're never going to succeed in life. We're never going to realize what God has for us. We actually end up Losing out on the blessing that God has for us. So, if your lifestyle does not express all that, then you need to reanalyze your life and figure out how to truly worship God. So, because in Psalms 96, 5 through 6 says, For all the gods and nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before Him. Strength and glory are in His sanctuary. So, in other words, like, our worship must be toward Him, and only Him, not to anything else. We, we need to put, re-emphasize our priority on Christ. Not on your job, not on how popular you are, not on how you look, how, what kind of dress you wear on Sundays, or what kind of suit you wear on Sundays. No, it's about having a... A one-on-one -on -one relationship with God and saying, Lord, I am all yours. Whatever you want me to do, I will submit and do it. Now, that doesn't mean that we're always going to agree to what he wants to do. No. But we have to learn how to say, okay, Lord, I don't understand why you want me to do this, but I'm going to do it. See, that's submission. That's being submissive and, 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 and being obedient and doing what he wants us to tell us. Not with an attitude. Not with, well, because um, my dad said so. Or because EJ said so on his vlog. I'm going to do it. No. 
you have to be willing to do it. You have to be willing that if you really want that change, you have to truly tell yourself and the Lord, I'm going to do this because I need a change. I want to change. So once we do that, then everything becomes easier to understand. So we must focus our, our practice of worship on the worthiness of God and not his wealthiness. Aha! See, we only worship... There, uh, before I go into that, there's, there's a song... And in the song, the, the brother says, We don't praise Him because we want results. We praise Him because He's good. See, that is why we miss out on everything that God has for us. Because we go to God praising and worshiping Him, not just on Sundays, but throughout, expecting something from God. Expecting. We're always, you know, give me. We, we are in a generation where it's, everything's me, 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 give me, give me. No. It's we give to Him. Because he's good, because he's worthy, because he is the great I am. That is why we worship. We don't worship for us to get blessed. No, we, we, this is this is not about us. Just like in a relationship, when when you're single before you got baptized, in his name, you it was all about you. Oh, I want to do what I want to do. Oh, I, it's all about me, me, me. Just like in, when you're single. You get all the goodies to yourself, but once you make that commitment and decide to bond with someone, with the Lord, it is no longer about you. It is about you and that other person, you and God. And now, you we have taken that next step to where, okay, everything we have is not ours anymore. It is His. So... That is why we lose out, because we go to services, we go to activities, expecting God to bless us. No, no. We shouldn't expect anything from God. N nothing, because God is, is the Almighty. He's the one in control. He decides whether He wants to bless us or not, according to our actions. So, if we go and, and just worship with a true heart, so even in the midst of of your trials, even in the, in the deepest part of your valley, we'll be able to to see the blessings. We'll be able to see the, the things that God ha can do for us. Because a lot of times, God is not, it's not because He puts us in the valley because He's mean. No, because a lot of times He wants to see, how serious are you about me? How serious is your heart towards me? So, Think about this, and I, and, I, and I will end with this. Um, things you have to ask yourself. Would you continue to worship God from this day forward if His signs and wonders all of a sudden were not so profound in your life anymore? Would you, would God still be worthy for your worship? Or is worship completely uh, dependent upon His blessings and what He does for you? You know, do you only worship God for what He can do for you, or do you only work, or do you worship God because what He has done for you? So, young people, I, I say all this with with a convicting heart and spirit, because it's time that we we stop thinking about ourselves. It's not about us anymore. Don't go and worship God on Sundays or any type of activity with the expectancy of of a blessing. No, worship because we need to tell and 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 acknowledge and tell Jesus that he is the best thing that's ever happened to us. Because once we do that, again, not for the expectancy of blessings, but to have, for our relationship to grow stronger with God. It's just, it's like anything like uh, here on earth, any relationship, in order f for a relationship to grow, you have to constantly tell that person, I love you. I'm here for you. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. I love you. you know, when you constantly say those things, and you're constantly proving, not just saying I love you and not doing anything, no, but your actions are proving it, that relationship strengthens. But if we're only doing it because they do stuff for us, then we don't know what love is, really. And we don't know, and in the spiritual sense, we don't know what true worship is towards God. So young people, take this into consideration. Take it, think about this. 
really think about all this. Not what I have said. This is what God has told me to tell you. To share with you. Because he's, he's longing to have a new revival. Not within a, any activity. No, a revival within you. You individually in your heart. So that you, we can all wake up and realize that one, he's coming soon. And second, that he wants an intimate relationship with you. Because the times are coming near. And I'm not a person to always to talk about the end times. Because one, I know where I'm going. So I'm excited about it. But we need to be prepared for when God comes. Because we never know when he's going to come. And we have to be ready and, and be strong in him. So young people, take this into consideration. Take, think about this. And I pray that this helps you so that you can all truly begin to realize what true worship is. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please message me. Um, share, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, but again, thank you very much for watching this video. And I hope it, it helped you guys out. God bless.